What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Words for My Face. On tonight's show, we have coming at you, talking about Constantine, the new TV show. We're talking about Death Note, the movie. And then we're going to give you a little bit of a wrap-up from this year's EVO 2014 Fighter Game Tournament. Stay tuned. <laughs> Greatest round ones of all time, of all sports, ever. You think though, Beverly Hills Cop, Robocop crossover needs to happen. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Words From My Face. My name is Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire, Brendan. You. And we are the one and only home of the Chewbacca Chainsaws. <laughs> and Brendan does sit there every week. He, he, he choreographs a little eye roll movement or an eyebrow twitch for, for that, that one moment every week. You should see how much time he painstakingly sits in front of the mirror practicing all those looks. Tell them about it, Brendan. Well, you know, it's a significant amount of time. I would say probably about 30, 35% of my waking day and 70% of my sleeping day. <laughs> that is right. He is, is so dedicated. He does it while he sleeps. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, yeah. what else do I have time to do? Come on. Got to gotta get it in there. And when you can do it in your sleep... Oh, that's, that's when you know you're talented. Down. I yeah. still haven't gotten down the looks in my sleep... But, you know, we can't all be as producer extraordinaire. I mean, no, come you on. can't. There's, there, there's a reason you got that title, producer extraordinaire, not just because I pulled it out of my butt the first time we did one of the shows. That is not why you have that title. It's because you are the producer extraordinaire. I'm glad. I'm glad we're over <laughs> this. <laughs> but, yeah, so tonight is Monday night. I hope everybody had a good Monday uh, returning to work. Um, and... Tonight is our entertainment night. We do this kind of every week. Um, so as you saw in the little intro, we are talking about uh, the Constantine TV show. There's a lot of cool things. We're going to kind of bring you guys up to date on Constantine if you don't know who this character is. Uh, then we're going to talk a little bit about the Death Note movie, a uh, very popular anime and manga series. Tell you a little bit about that. And we'll, we'll end it all with, uh, of course, EVO 2014, the, the greatest fighting game championships ever. Ever. Yeah. I don't know if there are any any other ones, but ever. There, there are, in <laughs> fact, uh, quite a few. Well, <laughs> okay, so that title is deserved. Ever. Period. We're done. Okay, now let's get into the real show. But let's start it off this week, same way we started off every week, and that is with the horrible movie of the week. <laughs> Yes, and this week, uh, listener Mike submitted the suggestion of watching Iron Sky. Uh, now, if you haven't heard of this movie before, lucky you. Um, it is about Nazis who, at the end of World War II, run to the dark side of the moon and have a moon base. Mm -hmm. And they live there until 2018. <laughs> this is... It, that, that sounds hilarious, but whenever your, your gimmick is... We got Nazis doing weird thing in space. Uh, it's like you got, yeah, you yeah. might have a little too much going on there. Like yeah, a little bit too much going on. So I do thank you, Mike, uh, for the recommendation. Again, I told you I'd come up with a horrible analogy for it. And this week, it was like my arm was trapped underneath a boulder, and instead of me having to hack it off with a dusty, dull pocket knife, you came through and did it for me. So thanks, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna run uh, out. Of I don't think you escaped it. Like that sounds like you're trying to escape, and uh, I don't think you did. Well, I still had to like watch the movie, movie, but at least I didn't have to pick it for myself, which is always a nice thing. And yeah, I don't know how many more weeks I'm gonna be able to come up with these horrible, gross analogies, but I'll keep it going for as long as I can. So if you have any great gross analogies, let us know down in comments down below. If I use it, I will give you a shout out. But that's about it. You get nothing else. Sorry, it's really we we don't have anything else to give. Yeah. I'll make what? a special video presentation. 
Thank there you, you go. We'll, we'll do a PowerPoint presentation just for you. <laughs> a PowerPoint. Okay, yeah, let, let, let's do that. We'll send really it to you. Fancy. Ah, really you can use it to get company meeting. <laughs> But yeah, so let's jump into Iron Sky. So as I said, it is the Nazis. They have built a base, built a base on the moon, and are living there, and pretty much waiting for their eventual return to Earth, where they are going to conquer the Earth and spread Nazi rule and everything. And so this movie, I don't know what to call it. It tries to be a comedy. It tries to be a spoof, uh, and which two can go in the same. It tries to be a little bit of its own satire, but none of that works. It's like if you put mayonnaise and peanut butter and jelly together. Those three things don't mix. One of those two might mix, but one of them ruins the whole rest of it. Yeah, and that's the mayonnaise, if you didn't know what I was talking about. Peanut butter and jelly is good, not mayonnaise. I don't yeah. know. If you've ever tried mayonnaise on your peanut butter and jelly sandwich, let us know. I'd be interested to hear that. It'd be kind of disgusting, though. However, you put bacon on that peanut butter and jelly sandwich, suddenly you got a winning combination. Yeah. And so let's just get into some of the things that I really You're disliked. Ignore the bacon. Yeah, I'm gonna ignore that, the bacon. That's how it is. Because I it, it threw me off. I didn't expect the bacon. Yeah, you don't expect the bacon in the peanut butter. No one expects the bacon. But <laughs> sometimes it really works as long as you get that bacon cooked just sometimes properly. Sometimes you gotta have some bacon. Sometimes you gotta have some bacon. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So, the but sweet okay. And so salty, let's, yeah, let's just good. get into the first thing that really irked me is, um, of course, it's 2018. They made Sarah Palin president. Now, they never say Sarah Palin, but it's Sarah Palin. She's president, and she wants to get reelected, so she sends a model to the moon. And, of course, the model is the most stereotypical black character you can ever make in any movie, ever. And it just it goes like down to a supermodel kind of model? Or what yeah, we're talking supermodel about? kind of model, yeah. Like, hey, I look good on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and uh, again, it falls apart from there. Um, they do show you the nice indoctrination of the Nazi kids. I mean, Nazis were good at that. I mean, hey, show show some of their strong points. If you want to indoctrinate kids, you just send them to Nazi camp, I guess. Well, especially on the moon. Yeah, on on the moon. I mean, where else are they gonna go? So yeah, and so throughout this whole movie, I mean, I'm gonna go through some of the other really stupid things that happened, but throughout this whole movie, it just kept coming to me: if you are the Nazis and you have the technology to build this huge moon base and get yourself to said moon and live there for over 60 years, why did you lose World War II? Could they, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Exactly. You think that, hey, we got rocket ships. We'll just fly around the Earth real fast and bomb people, that, and they can't touch us. Hey, or hey, we have spaceships. Let us just drop a rock from the atmosphere and aim it at the planet. Now, they actually Maybe. do that Hold in the movie. Hold on. Wait, 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 I figured it out. Maybe they lost because they built this giant moon base. They overexpended themselves. That's got to use up a whole lot of resources. Like, they put all of their fuel and rocket power. They put all their rocket fuel into it, all their tech into to space travel, which isn't necessarily weapons. All their men sent a whole huge chunk of their population to the moon. Suddenly, they didn't have enough people left and enough fuel left to, to fight the war. And okay. that's it. But still, but still, I'm on Earth. I'm Hitler. I don't want to be Hitler, but I am Hitler. And you I are think, Hitler? You hey. guys heard that you guys heard that here. Brian <laughs> I didn't want to be. But I I'm making it I have to be Hitler, but it just happens okay. to be the <laughs> I have to. Alright, and I have my choices. Okay. A finish moon base. B win the war and live. I'd say it goes like this. Yeah, um, because, again, you have spaceships. And later on in the movie, they do do this to try to destroy the Earth. But you can just drop rocks at the Earth once you're up in space. Just mine a moon rock and drop it at the Earth. And you'll destroy, like, huge swaths of the population. You know, that so. that's not really how it works. Otherwise, uh... It is how it works. If I could drop a rock from space, I would destroy everything! Um, you know, rocks drop from space all the time, Brian. They're called meteorites, and then meteors because they burn up in the atmosphere. Yeah, but I drop a non-burnable meteorite. I, I non-burnable meteorite. <laughs> I mean, come on, I can find one of those, right? I mean, the space. Not there's everything out in space. And I, hey, yeah, we're just and saying, a lot of them burn up in our atmosphere, including giant a, rocks from the moon. Get, but you could get a big enough one from the moon and then drop it, and it wouldn't burn up as much. I mean, like if a tennis yeah, ball. Yeah, but now you have to get a giant rock that you're propelling towards the Earth. 
Yeah, but I could drop like a tennis ball shaped rock. Uh, I mean, or it, it eventually ends up after it, it breaks apart in the atmosphere. At the size of a tennis ball hit New York City from like the length of the moon, um, and it would like destroy New York City. All I need uh, is a tennis ball. No. No, yes, I'm going to go with yes. I'm going to go with yes, and my science is correct. You know, okay. I put For Nazis one, on the moon, remember, I am a Fall or just burn up in our atmosphere all the time. For another, lots of things actually do hit the earth that are the size of a tennis ball, like, every year. And cities are not destroyed. Yes, they are. All the time. All the time. We just don't hear about them because there's giant cover-ups. All right. By the Nazis. Uh, thank, you. thank you. By the Nazis. The Nazis, are covering the Nazis that live on the dark side of the moon. So, yeah. Okay. Um... <laughs> Yeah, they, they like to throw in a lot of these stupid pun... pun, uh, pun, pun ja, uh, now I just can't speak. I'm just so flabbergasted by you denying my tennis ball would destroy New York City theory. I just don't know if I, I mean, can go I guess you've been putting a lot of time and effort into thinking about destroying New York City with tennis balls. <laughs> we don't want to question you. Uh, especially since it we find out that you're actually Adolf Hitler today. Well, so. I, I'm There's pretend... A lot of today, Brian. Just to put in a role... Put in the role to synopsize the movie. It's not like I'm actual Hitler. I mean, that would be pretty bad. I, I would have to shave my beard, and I wouldn't enjoy that. I like my beard. I just like to keep it the way it is. But yeah, so let me just call, uh, say a couple of the other horrible, horrible things about this movie. So they like to throw in a lot of pun jokes. That's what I was trying to say before. Um, and like this one girl standing there, she just got knocked over, and she's like, oh, how do I look to a guy? And he goes, oh, you're a knockout. And then all of a sudden, this grate falls from the ceiling and knocks him out. Like, oh, didn't see that one coming. <laughs> not see that coming? <laughs> Another fun <laughs> joke. Oh, man, we keep them rolling here at Words for My Face. Yeah. And again, I just I don't want people to stop thinking about the fact that if you're in 2018... And you already have the capability to go to space and build a space moon base. Why did you lose World War II? I just I could not get over that. Like literally in my notes, I wrote it over like ten times. Like, how did you lose World War II? How did you lose World War II? None of it made sense. But that's why it's one of the horrible movies of the week. And I'm gonna stop talking about it because I hated it. And it got a 1.5 Chewbacca chainsaws out of five. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and, and one last thing. Um, apparently, cell phones baffle the Nazis in the year 2018, even though they've already been in space for the past 60 years. I mean, it's just a different technology they never necessarily made. Stupid! Okay, so, but let's move it on. And let's talk about a good topic. Oh, I'm sorry. Rewind. Um... Let us know a horrible movie of the week for next week, because I do need another one of those, so I don't have to torture myself with it. Let us know in comments down below, at Words My Face on Twitter, Google+, and WordsMyFace.com. All these are places. Facebook, another place. It's a miracle, that internet thing. Yeah, Nazis don't know how to use it in space. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, let's use it on Earth. <laughs> well, that's true. I, I, it's, it's, it might as well be magic, if you ask me. Like how I'm looking at you right now and talking to you, uh, magic, a little bit of magic. Come on, you gotta admit, a little bit of magic. Uh, I happen to know how it works, but all right. <laughs> no, magic, magic is how how it works. I, it's actually quite, quite more amazing. There's all these like ones and zeros. Magic, magical atmosphere. ones and zeros. Magical ones and zeros? Yes. Yeah, sure, why not? Okay, magical ones and zeros. Magnetic signals or something, radio waves. But yeah, so let's actually move it on to um, uh, probably... I'm hoping, I have really high hopes for this. And that is Constantine is now getting his own show. Now, you've heard us talk about it. We've talked about it a couple times in different contexts because they've been in development of this show the past year, year and a half. And... I just wanted to kind of catch people up on who Constantine is, who John Constantine from Hellblazer Comics is. Um, because if you he's don't know jerk. him, eh, he's kind of a jerk. That That is kind of true. <laughs> that is that is not a lie. He is kind of a jerk. Because most people only know the Constantine movie that Keanu Reeves played. Now, whereas I don't think that was a horrible movie, um, eh, Keanu Reeves just cannot do that character justice. I'm sorry. He does some very, very good roles. And he does some bad ones. And that was probably one of his worst ones. That was the definitive, definitive Constantine, if you ask me. Really? Really? You like him that much? Nah, just, just whatever. Just roll with it. Uh, how about he's the only 
live action Constantine so far. I mean, you could go that way, but yeah. So, so the story of John Constantine. He's actually an Englishman, um, where he was a con artist slash magician slash just performer. Uh, he actually was pretty famous apparently in the comics. His run up, he had a couple big stage shows, and something happens. And he gets pulled into the world of the occult. Uh, now, his first appearance in the comics, I believe, was in the Swamp Thing series, where him and a couple other people come together to kind of bring the Swamp Thing down, because the Swamp Thing, most people, he's misunderstood. One of those classic misunderstood characters. And so that he lives is... in a the, swamp, Brian. And he's don't, a thing, so... Mm, mm. Don't try to defend him. There's no excusing that. Well, yeah, yeah. Swamp Things? Swamp Things. Sure. But yeah, so so he... That's Constantine's first appearance. He comes in, he tames the Swamp Thing, and then that started him on his own path of, of righteousness. Now, how he got his powers... Now, he doesn't quite have powers per se. Like I said, he's kind of a, a magician and not like a Zatanna magician, like more like just like a Siegfried and Roy magician. Um, but he um, actually, at one point, he obtains immortality because he angers one of the three lords of hell. Now, there are apparently three lords of hell in this mythos. And he prevents one of his friends become, from becoming um, her soul taken by one of the lords of hell. And so, that lord of hell, of course, he said, I want vengeance against you. I hate you. You stole one of my souls. So, what he did was he there then went and sold his soul to the other two lords of hell. And in doing so, prevented any one of them from taking his soul because they all want it so bad they know that if he ever dies and comes down to hell there will be a giant war over his soul. So, I don't know. Say what you will about all the devils wanting his soul. It's just kind of heavy. And so the other two lords of the hell kind of keep him alive. And you kind of saw that in the Constantine Keanu Reeves movie where the devil did come up and say, I wanted your soul. You're one of the souls I wanted to collect. So, that's kind of where he gets the powers. They're playing with the uh, the plans for the Neil the uh, Sandman stuff that they were talking about. Remember, because Constantine's one of the few DC universe characters that shows up in um, in the Sandman series early on because they had to tie everything together. But they also do the whole thing where uh, Sandman goes into hell in like the first volume, right, uh, and has to deal with the three lords of hell who previously there weren't three, but apparently there had been something while. Sandman was gone uh, doing that. He does. He has to to deal with them too. So yeah. So well, uh, I mean, uh, now that that will probably come into play. Um, uh, I wonder if Sandman's going to make it. We got a little bit awesome. of that. Well, they are talking about a lot of different characters that are going to be in the show. They've already announced a couple, um, but you keep hearing David S. Goyer is actually going to be producing, and I believe he's going to be writing a couple of the episodes. And if you don't know him, he's he's. Uh, been a writer producer on the Dark Knight series. Uh, what is it? Uh, da Vinci's Demons, which is a pretty cool show on Stars. Um, Man of Steel. He was involved in that, and so he should probably do some pretty cool things. And then they also have Neil Marshall, uh, a, a pretty big name TV director. He's directed episodes of Black Sails. He's directed episodes of Game of Thrones. One of my favorite episodes of Game of Thrones in season two. He he directed. So those two guys are going to be coming onto it. But they had a recently. Um, there was a television critics uh, awards or something like that where they did a lot of interviews for it and they were talking about how DC has pretty much full access to the whole occult universe of DC Comics which you know the Hellblazer series is probably the biggest of them all um, but then you have people like um, the Spectre he's planning on they already announced that he's probably going to make an appearance on that and that's another one of those uh, he got resurrected by God. Uh, who knows who resurrects these people? And he's like a, a spirit of vengeance. He'll be there. Dr. Fate will be uh, making an appearance. You already have the likes of Zed, uh, who is Constantine's love interest for it. But they're also saying that they have the doors open to just bring in a flood of characters. And that's really what their main goal with this show is. If it does well, they're going to spin it off into like three or four different shows. And I yeah, wouldn't I be surprised if Sandman... There was a project of Sandman uh, rumored out there. That was actually going to be one of the, the movies for the DC Universe. So I would not be surprised at all if they try to link the TV with the movies. Yeah, because that was one of the things that... Um, uh, what's it called? The DC Comics did a long time ago. They insisted on... Um, 
everything being united. That's why Sandman has. That's why Constantine's in the Sandman, and and uh, I think the uh, Martian guy from J from JLA or Justice League, Martian Unlimited, whatever. Manager. Yeah, the Martian guy, whatever his name is. <laughs> Martian um, man. Yeah, like they're in the Sandman just because. Um, DC said that, and all their comics and all their subsidiary comics, co- comics, because it wasn't even under DC Comics. It was, under, like, it was Vertigo. under Vertigo, yeah. Yeah, and same thing, Constantine. Like, why they're all tied together because of that. Um, so, yeah, any show, any DC thing has access to everyone because that's that's part of the DC design. Um, but I imagine they might want to start using some of these tie-ins just so that they. Uh, can avoid, even though they control it anyway, but to avoid, say, the um, problems that the that Marvel's been having with anything they haven't used in their stuff, you know, is, can be claimed by people that own, like, some of their rights. I don't know if DC ever did that. Like, they might have done that with Superman or something. I don't think they blanketed it out where, yeah, they sold, like, X-Men rights were pretty much, okay, you have everything X-Men related goes to Fox. I mean, goes to Sony. And then Spider-Man, everything Spider-Man related goes to Fox. So I don't think DC's ever quite done that blanket uh, licensing thing, uh, So which is, is pretty cool because then they get to keep it all a little more in-house. And another thing that they mentioned was don't be surprised if we see some of the superheroes that are having movies um, show up in the show. Maybe as different actors, but show up in the show anyway as a way to kind of introduce those movies to the mainstream. And now this is probably assuming that the show is a huge hit, that everybody loves it, which uh, I'm going to give it a shot. But Yeah, but I guess we haven't seen it yet, so never yeah. know. But, but DC's done pretty well with uh, TV shows in the past. Like, not all their... Um... Not all their movies are great, but their TV shows have been pretty pretty solid, at least the ones that I've seen. And granted, it's only been a few, like, you know, the Smallville show and uh, was, was well, a really Well, and David S. Goyer had, had a hand in, in the Smallville show, too. So yeah. if you like that direction, I can see it going a lot more gritty and dark because I was, I was actually reading something about there was this one scene in the pilot episode where NBC's like, ah, you guys got to kind of do some editing. I don't know, it might be a little too graphic because they had a couple of dead bodies laying on on a, a table or something like that and one of the serial killers was hacking them up or something, the occult guys, and they're like, oh, you can't show their butts. And then so one of the writers said, well, how about if we just put a bunch of blood on their butt so you can't see their butt cracks? And they're like, okay, that'll work. So, you know, they're, they're trying <laughs> okay. to keep it on the edge. They're keeping like it on the blood. edge. That makes it better, right? Yeah, I, I don't know how that makes it better, but apparently in NBC's eyes, that makes it better. So it, it does seem like the, it, this is not going to be an 8 o'clock slot show. This is going to be a 10 o'clock slot show. So, uh, you know, hopefully they'll keep it a little more edgy. And if you don't know the source material of Constantine, Go out there and check out a few of them uh, because they're actually pretty cool. They're a lot more gritty, and that's pretty much why DC, I think, kept it away from their mainstay comics is because especially when this started coming out, the late 80s, early 90s, um, it wouldn't have been as received as well if it had had the DC name on it. DC might have gotten a little more backlash, so they had the vertigo yeah, kind of do it. Yeah, and, and unlike the depiction in the movie, he's, he's not really a clear-cut, like, good Mm-mm. guy. Yeah. He's he's there like he's doing his he's kind of like playing everyone right like he like you said he he sold his soul to like two lords of hell after pissing off the other one to play <laughs> yeah. them off against each other he does the same with uh, like the the heaven side and or similar stuff anyway like he's playing the two sides and like he's about maybe balance but really it's all about himself you know so. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, I can see this show going in a hundred different directions. Hopefully the direction they take it in will be good. So that's, Mm -hmm. that's, but I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Actually, in Comic-Con this year, they will be showing off the pilot. So hopefully after Comic-Con shows it off, we'll all have access to it and we'll be able to see a little bit more of the direction the show's going to go in. But it should be out on NBC this fall. So look forward to that. Um, So yeah, tell us what you think about the show. Is this gonna? Are you excited about Constantine? Do you just not care? Uh, Would you rather just see read the comics about this guy? I mean, let us know in comments down below or at Words My Face on Twitter, Words My Face at gmail.com and uh, Google Plus. We have that in Words My Face dot com. Oh, Facebook. There's too many things for us to say. I'm I'm just gonna say you know what to do. You know. 
But yeah, so let's let's move it on to the next story of the night. And this is one that me and Brendan both really... Uh, it's a show that we both loved when we first saw it, and that is Death Note, a very popular anime and manga series, is actually going to get its own American revival uh, with a movie. And now if you don't know Death Note, where I first saw it, and I believe where you first saw it too, Brendan, was on... Adult Swim. There you go. And that was one of the cool shows. That was when Adult Swim started to show a little bit more uh, adult cartoons, I would say, towards at well, um, Saturday so nights and Sunday nights. Cool cartoons, but they had... I don't know. I guess they got a little bit edgier, but it was really just what came down the line. I don't know. I wasn't surprised when they showed it on Adult Swim at that point because they had already had some yeah, fairly major stuff along those lines. So. Yeah. Well, that's true. I mean, they they hadn't shied away. That they did call that it Adult Swim for a reason, because they want adults to watch. Ah, hey, hey, I get it, I get it. But uh, yeah. So, uh, Death Note is a show about a kid who one day stumbles across a book. It says Death Note on it, and it has a few rules written on the inside, and it's a blank notebook, and it pretty much says, whoever whose name you write down in full in this book will die within ten seconds unless you specify. Well, thinking about their die. face, I think. I think oh, yeah. Well, think, you have to see their face as well. That was one of the, the tricks, too. Yeah. Uh, well, um, and then they die. So this kid finds it, and he decides he's going to kind of make himself into his own kind of like god character, and he goes on a killing spree of just killing off every known criminal that has ever graced the news. Um, and then, you know, people are like, well... No, you probably shouldn't be killing all these people. You should well, let them have a fair trial. For... That's the thing. It divides the world up, though, because some people are completely in favor of it and think, like, oh, it's the greatest, whatever, bring justice to the land. But Others that... are like, yeah, you're just killing everyone. Yeah, he was kind of just killing everyone. But that some of these people the... are already in jail, you know? And I can't remember what letter this guy was, but that re... was it L? Was the great detective? Yeah, L was the main uh, the main bad guy for, for a lot of it. Anyway. Well, not bad guy, but like the kind of good yeah. guy. Actually, he could be considered the good guy. <laughs> yeah, I, I would, I would consider him the himself. good guy since he's trying to stop murders, but, uh, you know... But but yeah, so and that leads to the rise of a really smart, great detective L, and it's kind of about these two's battle. Um, L's trying to figure out who they call him Kira, the guy who runs the Death Note is, and the Death Note guy is trying to really find out his name and all his information and kill L off. So it's a really, yeah. really cool show, and and it I can a great see it best match because they both yeah yeah check. because uh, L pretty well knows who Kira is, but he can't prove it yet is the mm-hmm. big deal, and he's not absolutely certain. But so, but he also knows the guy is really smart anyway, so he recruits him to work with him. Even well, telling let's not him, give away I the whole show. Guy. Let's not give away the whole show. Yeah, but that was, that was, that was a pretty early on thing. Like They, they do that. Uh, that was like halfway um, through the series. And on the other, okay, but then on the <laughs> other hand, like we said, you have to be able to see the guy. L reveals himself to the other guy, like he shows himself. But he doesn't. But he doesn't reveal his real name. He keeps going by L. So that's the big thing. Is the other guy needs to figure out what his name is. He knows who he is. He doesn't know his name. Yeah. But they they do go back and forth uh, trying to figure out, feel each other out a little more. And, and I just love that show because it seemed like almost every episode or every two episodes you had that like, oh that was a crazy twist. <gasps> Oh wow! What the, what did they do there? Oh, I, can he can he really do that? Like, and it just kept you guessing um, over mm-hmm. and over and over, which was such a great back and forth. Now. Japan has kind of run the story to death. Uh, they did come out with, uh, the, of course, the anime. The manga was first there. Um, and they actually also had three yeah. movies that cover yep. the whole thing. And the movies were pretty good. I actually enjoyed those. Um, mm-hmm. And they changed around the story a little bit, which I thought was pretty cool, because it didn't end the same way that the TV show uh, ended. Uh, I'm just curious to see what type of American version uh, we're going to get. Yeah, it's going to be... You know, it's kind of one of those risky business, and I have mixed feelings about it a little bit, because we don't have the best track record of making live actions out of, um, out of like anime related material. Like, yeah, there was I don't a Dragon think Ball. Does. Yeah, well, well there yeah. like the Dragon Ball Z movie Evolution. Yeah, that was absolutely that was, horrendous. Yes, that was terrible. Yes, it was um, very bad, very bad. I mean, we we've made movies out of a lot of other. Like Japanese stuff. Like I think I think uh, the Ring was based off a Japanese movie. That was a Japanese. Like that. Yeah, that was um, uh, yeah, the Ring. Um, 
No, The Grudge. The Grudge was a Japanese movie, I believe. Maybe both of them. Yeah, maybe. There's a few, but those weren't like based off some kind of anime style with that kind of following, anyway. Um, which you know, those were those were okay. Those were okay movies. Mm-hmm. They weren't as bad as like Evolution, but I, I can't think of very many other anime that we we've, we've really tried. But again, like I I just don't. It it's going to be tough to see. But maybe because of the nature of this and the seriousness of this material of you know it's not like a, a kind of funny just action setup maybe um, maybe you'll get a little bit better attention this time more money because of the market being there and uh, just the nature of it well, well, I guess we'll see yeah and when the show did come out it was one of the highest rating uh, shows on Adult Swim which I mean doesn't get huge numbers but gets big enough numbers for people to kind of take notice it was um, very popular in general for, for, for an anime like it's yeah. it's still pretty popular like very well known and everything uh, I mean so. like I said I still like it I just, I just hope they don't water down the story too much because I mean it was 37 episodes so you're thinking that's about what 16, 17, 18 hours uh, worth of TV I mean, and obviously, boiling it down to movie. two hours is going to be tough, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. And they might break it up into two movies, like the Japanese version did. Yeah, um, I would so. definitely expect it to be a lot closer to the Japanese movies than the the show, just because of form factor. You know, what you have to yeah. work with. Yeah. But all in all, if you haven't heard of this project, go ahead and look it up. Uh, check out the Death Note shows. I'm sure you can find those online somewhere. They're awesome if you haven't seen them. Um, you know, and and let us know what you think. Is there any other animes you'd like to see made into actual movies? Uh, you know, is this a good idea? Is this a bad idea? Have the Japanese already done it to death and we don't need another one? I don't know. Let us know in comments down below. Uh, or, you know, wordsmyface.com, at wordsmyface on Twitter, and all those other fun places. But, you know what time of the night it is, right, Brennan? Oh, do I know what time of the night it is? I'm asking. Do you know what time of the night it is? It's 10.37. Well, yes, but with my voice getting a little lower, that means it's time for Quick Hits. Yes, and so, for the first Quick Hit of the night, we have Bioware is actually planning to have a panel on Mass Effect 4 at Comic-Con. So What? I just think that's pretty cool. Uh, that just confirms that there will be a Mass Effect 4. Uh, maybe they'll leak yeah, a little bit of the details. The... <laughs> well, maybe they'll leak a little bit of the details about what the story is going to revolve. Is it going to be a continuation of the Mass Effect trilogy, or is it going to you know, just delve into some other part of the universe? Because that was such a huge, crazy universe that they could go anywhere and have a good time with it. Yeah, yeah. we'll see. Well, let's move it on to the next quick hit. And that is Super Smash Brothers has revealed three new characters today, and that is that was pretty crazy. <laughs> Lucina, Robin, both from the Fire Emblem series, and Captain Falcon. So right now we have thirty six in all. His return, which yeah, Captain... it was kind of surprising not to see him earlier because he was a pretty popular character for for some time. He's been there since stuff. the beginning. Yeah, and so that's that brings the total roster of fighters on this this game up to 36, with another one I believe planned on an announcement tomorrow, and probably another couple. I look to see a Mr. Game and Watch come in there. I haven't heard him. Uh, Ness to make a return. I don't know what characters you think are going to come back. Uh, well, definitely, definitely Ness. Uh, Game and Watch maybe. Um, I'm kind of thinking they're going to release a couple that are new. Um, but I, I just don't know what because I'm I'm surprised that they're still releasing new characters this late. Yeah, because when like does I it come out? out? Like in yeah. a month or two. Well, the the 3DS version is now set to come out in Japan in September. Hmm. So and then here in October, originally they were saying August. So I guess they had to push it back a little bit, maybe because they keep adding extra. I don't know. I mean, obviously they've they've had these characters for a while, but they had these huge announcements revealing like. 20 characters earlier, and then they had a whole bunch more at E3, and then they had a whole bunch you know, after their conference at E3. I'm just I'm, I'm surprised they're still reviewing, but, but I like it. You know, mm-hmm. keep it coming. Keep the yeah. keep the momentum going. Yeah. Um, Train roll, uh, steamroll right into the release, so yeah, they're looking forward to that. But let's move it on to the next quick hit. And that is Yahoo has done it again, and they're stepping in to save another show, and this time it is Fox's Enlisted, um, and when I heard the news, I was like, I understand community, but I don't understand why you'd want to save a horrible show like Enlisted. 
Yeah, that only had one season too, right? I don't bad. even know. Um, yeah, I watched it like two or three times. It. Not entertaining. It really just not entertaining. So yeah, that was kind of a head scratcher there. But let's move it on to the next quick kid. And that is the Rob Zombie directed AC Unity animated short, and when I say AC Unity, I mean Assassin's Creed Unity. Um, he has uh, an animated short to go along with the video game, and it is going to be uh, debuted at Comic-Con. That's interesting. Uh, I have, I mean, Rob Zombie has established himself as a pretty big director in horror movies. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know of anything else he's done, but this is, mm-hmm. I guess, branching out for him. So, and cool. it's going to be animated, too, so I don't know if he's ever done an animated thing. Eh, so yeah. that'll be interesting. Um, and then... The last quick hit of the night is going to be that Dawn of the Planet of the Apes has uh, rocked the box office this weekend, um, knocking Transformers Age of Extinction out of the number one spot, coming in at 73 million domestic box office. Not surprised, though. You know what? I kind of don't like the way that these... uh, The naming convention is for the Planet of the Apes movies, though. Because they had Rise of the Planet of the Apes, is the the first chronologically, and then dawn shouldn't it be dawn then rise. Well, the sun rises before dawn, so no. It doesn't that is dawn. So. Well, it has to rise for it to be dawn. So I'd say the rising happens first. I don't know, but I would just think like, but happens. you have dawn, and then it rises in the sky further, and then you get to like noon, and then you get to mm. the. I, what are the different like? Because they've already done all the Planet of the Apes movies. These are the, the, nice the, the afternoon of the Planet of the Apes. <laughs> See, I don't think they ever did the afternoon, but mid morning uh, that of the funny. Planet of the Apes. <laughs> yeah. The mid morning breakfast of the Planet of the Apes. <laughs> Brunch time with Planet of the Apes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> of the Planet of the Apes. Yeah, there'll be the Hobbit Planet of the Apes crossover. Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> Second breakfasts of the Planet of the Apes. <laughs> <Tea time. laughs> you know, and I actually haven't seen this one, but it looks pretty good. But yeah, so that will end the quick hits of the night. Remix. R- remix, and now that brings us to the last story of the night, and that is a little thing that's been going on, uh, and that is Evo Fighting Championships 2014. And if you don't know what Evo is, it is where it is probably the biggest fighting championship tournament. We talked about this a little earlier. Um, there are a couple other ones out there, but Evo is definitely that's the big one. That's the granddaddy of that's the world's. Uh, that's like the world champion. That is, it, it's yeah. all people, players come from all around the world. To that tournament, that's where the best are, and they bring their best, and mm-hmm. you can make it, you know, even partially up the uh, the ladder at Evo. You're an amazing player. So yeah, yeah. and um, this year, a lot of fighting over a hundred thousand people watched it live on Twitch, which is a pretty big amount. And then that's just the people who watched it live. I can only imagine the people who just catch caught a couple of the matches afterwards, like I did. I I, did, I just was like, okay, I'm gonna look at that championship, that championship, that championship, you know. And that's kind of how I watched it. But it was pretty cool to see it over the weekend going on. They Different channels like IGN put up a lot of them. Uh, of course, was that a hundred thousand? Was, was yeah, that a hundred thousand for the whole thing or for like one match? It said like more than a hundred championship uh, match. More than a hundred thousand. I think it was over the whole weekend, so it's still a pretty okay. good number for the whole weekend, though. Um, hmm. And yeah, and prize money was up to a hundred eleven thousand dollars was given away for the different tournaments this year. And uh, let's run over a couple of the the games. The biggest game there was actually Ultra Street Fighter 4. Uh, but then you had other games like Killer Instinct, Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom, Injustice, Super Smash Bros. Melee, King of Fighters th- uh, 8, Blaze Blue, which was actually very surprising to me because that was like the least known of all these fighting games in my opinion. And it had the highest payout for prize money, so... Well, that's interesting. Maybe they're trying to get more people into that because I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit more later. And I know that that fighting game series uh, myself, but mm-hmm. it is a little shaky in the in the fighting game community for what I know. So. Yeah, and and then the the last big one was Tekken Tag Two, and I think the noticeable leave out was like a Soul Calibur game and um, Dead or Alive, which is huge on the the I thought the fighting game circuit. So that kind of threw me off. Yeah, I've heard Soul Calibur really is not considered that serious of a fighting game. Like, I like the series, and I, I've heard some people say, like, it's kind of questionable why that one gets its place. Um, but um, 
one of the things to, to know about fighting games in the fighting game community, there's kind of a distinction between what are considered the, the serious competition fighting games and what they call like the anime games, hmm. which are a certain style and certain companies uh, do them. Blaze Blue would typically fall under that category um, and not be as major in the, the fighting game tournaments, at least in the U.S. Maybe it's different in other parts of the world, uh, which is why it's at Evo and had such a big payout. I'm not sure. Um, but in a lot of the U.S., they, they don't really gravitate towards the, the anime ones. They're not seen as being very good competition. Uh, they get a lot of uh, kind of slack for, or um, slights for whatever it is. Um, but so you wouldn't see, and for some reason, I think Soul Calibur is considered part of that group. Hmm. Well, I figured Soul Calibur because they have more weapons than some of these other ones, but then I look at games like Mortal Kombat is usually one of the ones involved, and a lot of people are like, well, why isn't Mortal Kombat in this year? Well, that's because they replaced it with Injustice, Gods Among Us, which is made by the same people, which is pretty much run on the same engine, so it's that's the, other thing, the um, same game. That's the other thing to, to remember, too. The companies that make these games also have to, to allow it in the tournament, I think. Because I remember there was some controversy about Nintendo previously not allowing um, Smash Brothers or Smash Brothers. First, they didn't want it, the, it at all in the competitions, and then they didn't want it to be exclusively Melee because they've kind of, because, you know, they had moved on to Brawl, right? Yeah. Um, but they, but they, they, they slack end up on that. They do stick with Melee, because that was the one that was in there. And who knows, I mean, maybe if you put out another one, like, whatever this new one is going to be, hmm, yeah. maybe that'll show up. But but I just think they, it's cool really that embraced. video games is becoming yeah. more of an esports genre, and a lot of people don't believe in esports. I'm a little bit skeptical from time to time. But it is a competitive force, Uh and so what is sports in general? It's just some sort of competition between either individuals or teams, and that's really what you have here. It doesn't necessarily have to be physical to be a sport, but it is a sport. I mean, like, golf isn't really physical yet. Yeah, it's more physical than video games, don't get me wrong, but it's not as physical of a sport. Bowling, that's considered a sport, again, not as physical. Um, but I, I kind of think it's cool because you also have the rise of the MLG gaming. Uh, their championships was, what, a couple months ago, and that... Mm -hmm. That came out to pretty big numbers, too. So it seems like we're kind of seeing a rise in the whole video games as an industry. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and make a prediction right here. In the next 15 to 20 years, we're going to be like South Korea. Because South Korea, I want to say the biggest sport in South Korea is StarCraft, isn't it? It definitely is. <laughs> you know? it, it just hands down is. <laughs> that is uh, their sport. They have I'm major not... teams, major sponsors for that. It's, it's like the sports teams here, like other sports, like, I don't know, basketball you, teams. If you're good at StarCraft and you move to South Korea, you can make a pretty darn good lim living doing that. And people would actually know you walking down the streets, which is kind of um, weird to say, but... Yeah, but it's like the best players in the U.S. have gone to just train with some of the South Korean teams before, mm -hmm. and they just get blown away, like, all the time. Just, you know, regular practice, whatever. Can't do it. Like, you just... It is just so big there. It's like it's like I I don't even know what to compare it to. I guess it'd be like uh, going from a, a European player of football coming to the U.S. play the NFL. Like that's that's yeah, the level. Yeah, they would get crushed. And I don't even mean the European league player. Like you're just like a, a club level <laughs> whatever player. Or like a Canadian football player. Huh. But, uh, you know, but yeah, I, but my prediction is that in the next 15 to 20 years, that will replace some of the lower sports like tennis and golf as being more viewed. Uh, you're going to start, because the MLG gaming actually was broadcast on ABC, uh, and the X Games is starting to put some of the MLG gaming in there. I Not anytime, not anytime immediately, but it will keep growing in my opinion, and it'll become more of a thing to watch, especially as video games get a little more immersive. Uh, people want to see that more, so that's just yep. my opinion. But yeah, so, and I think we've uh, done our 50 minutes for the night, so let us know what you think. Is the video game industry going in this direction? Are they going to have more tournaments? Are these tournaments going to get bigger, or is this just about as big as it'll ever get? Let us know in the comments down below. Of course, words for my, at words for my face on Twitter, words for my face com, words for my face at gmail.com, and Google+, Twitter, all those things, you know, are, you know, Facebook, Hit us up. Let us know what you think. But as always, I am Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire, Brendan. You.
and we are going to headbang our way out of this joint. Are we? We are, if you have the song ready. Oh, I have the song ready. Good night, everybody. If I can find the stop, 